Hi, this is Dr. Goldcamp, and welcome back for another episode. Today, we're going to talk about protein sparing modified fast, but a very specific form of it, which we call precision PSNF, that being the shorthand for protein sparing modified fast. And really what you need to do to dial it in and make it work for you, because it really is a transition to a much healthier lifestyle. So I'd like to go over the details, answer a lot of questions I've asked, been asked over the last probably eight or nine months. Yes, we have a program, $50 for a month. You don't have to do it. Just watch the videos. And if you have any questions and if you're really eager, then consider joining our group. But I put a number of videos out there, so you should have it, have the ability to understand exactly what to do. If not, that's why we put the group out there as a fallback to that. Okay, let's get started. We call it Precision PSNF, the best results, how to get the best results on a protein sparing modified fast. What you need to know to implement PSNF and why this is perhaps the healthiest way to live. And when I say that, I'm talking about PSNF, protein sparing modified fast or protein sparing fast. Why is it important to us personally, that is Carl and Judy, how it came into our lives, PSMF, is pretty straightforward. Shorthand, that's a link for our whole story, and you get to have the backstory far before we ever got introduced to or figured out PSMF. However, this has been kind of like the creme de la creme. It's been the last sort of most recent chapter in our dietary changes over the last, well, since 2013. How many years is that? Seven plus two is nine. So over the last nine years, uh, we came from two dire situations. Judy was dying with a brain tumor, and I was dying from ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. Didn't sound pleasant. I'm not going to go into it. That's where you can go for the story right here. We didn't come here by luck. We didn't happen to see a YouTube or a video. We came here out of complete catastrophe, complete personal catastrophe, metabolic catastrophe. So I had to go back and figure out what we miss. What did we miss? How do we get here? How did this happen to a guy who's a doctor? How did this happen to a guy who's a naturopathic doctor? He's supposed to be a little more enlightened than other doctors. But anyway, watch that if you're interested. So it is about a transformation. Have no doubt you're actually in for a personal transformation. Here's Judy before operation one to get out her meningioma, which was impinging upon her optic chiasm, and that's why she's bruised up on one side. There's her second operation that's sort of the least revolting of the pictures I could choose from to say it was major 13 hour surgery, major brain surgery, first operation, second operation, healing this way. Here's what she's like now. So it's the before and after, which I think is important for you to see. It, this is most certainly was a transformation for us. Here's where she is doing hit. There she is in the garden, picking out her Friday nights. We have in the summer, we have dry farm wines. That's her on the beach and that's her doing her videos. She's now making a whole cooking channel separate from mine. And so for me, my transformation was from dying. Does that sound overdone? It's not from overdone. I needed four blood transfusions and I had to fight for them. I had to show them by the labs that I had in myself. It was kind of pathetic, but make a long story short, I needed four blood transfusions and a lot of steroids uh, from a high stress induced autoimmune disease initiation. Had no history of Crohn's or ulcerated colitis before that came. I got deep into what makes up a healthy microbiome. And by the way, it's not just one thing. Went to a lot of international conferences and talked to the world leaders. Anyways, it's under pre previous videos. Feel free to dig into that. So this is me now. Absolutely. That's me doing uh, HIT. That's uh, how I look now. That's the, my videos that I do. And it's always more research, always learning more. You're never at the final point. And I realized that I had been, I had been under a lot of false solutions about what really made good health. And I'm not just talking about metabolically, the ketogenic diet. Those are big movers, by the way, in our lives. But it's deeper than that as well. How most people come to PSMF is a little bit different than how we came. They come basically this way they, or you need to lose significant weight. Okay, you looked into keto and you did that and you had some good results, but it plateaued. All right, well, then you heard about carnivore, so you tried that for a little bit. And then carnivore, then OMAD, which is one meal a day, then intermittent fasting or time-restricted fat eating. In other words, you're eating either just one meal a day or a very limited time window of when then you eat. But that plateaued, so you're still wondering. You did all these things that you thought were fads or healthy or however you came into it. But what is out there to actually help you go 
to the end of the goalpost, to the end of the 100 yards you're supposed to be making. You've been hearing about a lot of protein sparing modified fast, but you still don't understand it. It sounds technical, and it is not technical. If anything, it's ancestral. A precision protein sparing modified fast is a protein sparing fast done precisely by certain rules you have to follow. Not real complicated. Let me tell you, there's a little work involved, a little intellectual focus up front to achieve the best results, the most effective manner in the shortest time possible. Sounds like a deal? It, that's what it is. That's what it is. As I say, you can watch the videos and you'll get there. Do our course if you really want to in the back. A lot of people, we have uh, weekly live calls so people can really make sure they get the results they're after. But so first thing to know is this is not a gimmick, but it's a lifestyle change, really. It's the closest thing that you'll ever get to an ancestral diet. The ancestral diet, the ancestral diet is a reference to the diet that we had for most of the 200,000 years that man evolved. You know, what did we eat? You know, slice off the last 100 years, if not the last 150 years, and it pretty much is the diet before that, for the most part. So you don't need to become a hunter-gatherer unless you want to be, um, but you need to focus on what you're doing as you transition into this approach. Here are the steps to creating effective weight loss, the core of what we do. One is you calculate the amount of protein you require, we'll get into that. You divide that amount into four separate eating times, snacks, meals throughout the day, or if you're a top athlete, then you can divide it into five different feedings, I'll call them throughout the day, of the protein that you're required. We'll get into that. Use whole food sources of protein, that means animals, it's fish, it's poultry, it's lamb, it's beef, it's pork. Whatever you're comfortable with, that's whole food. It's not going to get processed salami or anything else or something in a package, not at all. It, timing. You're not going to do this seven days a week. So um, I do it primarily seven days a week. And why did I just break my own rule? I've been doing it for a while. And I feel more comfortable on telling people to focus four days a week, three or four days a week, and then to take some time off. Why? Is because if they truly just focused on protein and very lean protein, they would soon become fat deficient. And fat is really important. It's your brain, it's your nerves, it's a lot of things. And so we tell people to three or four days a week and then add in higher fats. Some people go, oh, I'll go back to keto for those three or four days a week or two or three days a week if they want to do that, but mostly it's about adding fat. So what we tell them is add egg yolks and your day is off. That's it. That's the solution. For the hyper-focus, we have kind of an advanced precision protein sparing modified fast steps uh, for even better results. And I'll tell you what they are, but I can go into them far later as a, as a bonus section or actually another video. But they are focusing on your omega-6 factors, right? You're really going through and thinking about that get into the specifics, you bring in high intensity training, which is slow, high intensity weight resistance training, because now you're going to put a demand to your muscles, because the whole idea is to build up muscle mass, not to be a hypertrophied workout person, but to have the muscle mass you have need for in the rest of your life. Most adults, as in 99% of them, after the age of 50, are sarcopenic, which means they don't have enough muscle mass. So apart from the idea that they can fall over more easily and all that other stuff, it's actually they have, they've impaired their immune system. If you don't have enough muscle mass, you have impaired your uh, immune system. Another topic, um, highly researched and certainly true. Here's why and what this looks like for you. First of all, you can't overeat protein. The things that are not gonna happen in your protein, you're, you're not gonna dissolve your bones. There's no research so that's your, your bones are not going to turn to chalk. Um, it's not going to be a hardship on your kidneys unless you already have some sort of kidney disease. So if you have kidney disease, I wouldn't be adding protein to this. But if you're a normal person, it is fine. I'm a normal person. It is fine. Okay, so this is basically a graph showing that the more protein as a percentage of your diet, the lower your appetite becomes. And so basically, as that's this, this is the secret of the protein sparing modified fast. You are having an appropriate amount of protein that you need, and there's plenty of research on that, and I've covered it in plenty of other videos, but you're having that amount, and by having that amount, call it protein first, as in that is the highest priority of your diet on a daily basis, your appetite sinks down to the point that you do induce waste loss without thinking about it. That's weight loss. So you can't overeat it. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is calculate the amount of protein you require. How do you do that? 
it's just like falling off a log. I swear it is. All right, required daily protein for men and for women. It's more or less the same, slightly less for women, slightly more for men. So the first thing you need to know is your ideal body weight. So what is your ideal body weight? That's not a very sophisticated calculation. So whether you weigh 500 pounds or whether you weigh 100 pounds, it's measured on your height and weight and gender. Height and weight and gender. And so um, this is what we did for this chart here. So we have feet and inches. So if you're 4'10", as a woman, your ideal weight, and I'm not telling you to weigh this. I am not telling you to weigh 104 pounds. People go, oh my gosh, I would never weigh that. I don't care if you weigh that or not. I really don't. I don't care if you weigh five times this. What I'm saying is we're using that amount to calculate the amount of protein you need to have on a daily basis. That's got to be the number one thing. I can't weigh this. It's for the people who watch this in 30 seconds and don't understand it. But um, so for a 104 pound woman who's 5'10", her ideal body weight that we're using to calculate the protein requirement is 104 pounds. Okay, what does that mean? We are calculating one gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight. So one gram for a whole day. One gram, this person should have 104 grams of protein per day. Pretty easy so far, right? Okay, so what we do is we break that down uh, into four or five servings. So you have it throughout the day. We'll, we'll elaborate in just a second, but I want you to know that concept. So the 16 grams, what the heck is this? This is, you need to eat, when you do eat protein, you need to eat enough protein at one point, which is actually not that much, to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Muscle protein synthesis. The making of, the stimulation of making muscle tissue for you. So you need to eat if you're going to eat, you'll notice if you take 16 grams and divide it into 104, it actually is over five. So what you would probably do is you would have dinner, you're probably eating a little more. And I'll show you exactly how we do this. But know that you're eating at least 16 grams as that 5'10 woman. And you're doing that at least four times a day. You could do it five times a day if you want to. Only super athletes really worry about five times a day. Some people go, wait a minute, I just did OMAD. I did time-restricted eating. This is just the opposite of that. Well, actually, it's not the opposite of that because if you were to measure, the reason you did OMAD is to drop your, your glucose down to normal, your insulin down to normal, and this is exactly that. So it serves the same purpose, but it is a little bit different. Okay, men's different. 5'10", that's my height. So... My ideal body weight is 162 pounds. I don't weigh this. Um, the minimum amount of protein I should eat at any one point to, to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, which is my goal, is 30 grams. Ideally, if I did that five times a day, that'd be great. Uh, I don't do it five times a day. I do it four times. All right, chart for men or women. Here you go. The minimum amount you need to have, I switched them. Minimum amount you need to have, men or women, that's all I want you to know. So when you have your snack, if you have at least 19 grams for this five foot, five foot, uh, um, four foot, 10 inch man. And so we're gonna find out what that looks like. So you're gonna find out what your ideal serving is gonna look like, all right? So right now it's still kind of technical. I don't know what 19 grams of protein looks like, but we're gonna solve that for you, okay? Just know this is a reference. Okay, so when you eat protein, make sure to eat enough to maximize the benefit, which is, if you really wanna get into it, it's 0.18 grams per pound of ideal body weight. I would simply say this. Why don't we just round that up to 0.2? So what we have is a fifth. We have 20% of your ideal body weight. There's your five eatings, five eating intervals. But the research is 0.18, okay? This is pretty much the same thing. So this is where we got that. This is how we're doing it. That's your minimum. So for those who are doing OMAD and saying, I'm gonna eat all my protein at one point, a couple things is wrong with that. You don't get greater benefit so for the person who needed, the 5'10 man who needed to eat 30 grams per feeding, right, for, per meal or snack, if that person has the 162 grams of protein, that's a lot of protein at one's eating, unfortunately, that would be a waste of a lot of protein because your body can only take in so much at one time. So to overeat protein at any one time is not going to serve you. And it may arguably, if you're having all that protein at one point, maybe that might be a strain on your kidney. I've never heard that, but it's just a stupid thing to do. So please don't do that. So 
why you need to have your protein in multiple feedings and not OMAD, not one meal a day. So you divide the amount you have, your ideal body weight, into four separate eating times. I call them feedings, snacks, meals, whatever, throughout the day. Minimum protein required, 22, 60. This is what I chose for the woman of 5'4", the man of 5'10". It's what the minimum amount means. It is at the least amount of protein needed to cause muscle tissue to go grow. Therefore, when you have something to eat, make sure it's at least that amount because it would be less efficient. So if you had, if you needed uh, your minimum was 30 and you only ate 15, that really is, it's better than nothing, but you need to have a little bit of a, what they call a bolus, a little larger amount. Uh, and you'll see that it's not that much. So you'll notice that 125 grams for this woman now of five, four, um, which is over here, right? That's the ideal body weight. That's a total number of grams she needs to have per day. We divided that. That's a minimum she needs to have to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, MPS. So, but only top athletes have five feedings a day. Five feedings is ideal because your protein, you're eating protein and your body's assimilating it. You're eating protein, your body's assimilating it. It basically uh, has to have it in sections. So insulin resistance, diabetes, and loss of muscle mass actually go together. So the fact that most of our population has become diabetic, pre-diabetic, obese, really is concurrent, happens at the same time in which they are losing muscle mass. Your muscle mass is the thing that controls your blood glucose. Yes, it's the pancreas that secretes the insulin, of course, but it's your muscle mass that has the biggest appetite to suck off that glucose. So this is just showing you that. Here's glucose uptake. It's primarily by muscle. So for those who are sarcopenic, they don't have that much muscle mass to suck in to when they exercise. So type 2 diabetes, muscle glucose uptake is decreased by 50 or 60% because they have less muscle mass. Well-researched, and here's basically saying 40-year-old athlete, a 74-year-old sedentary athlete, like hardly any muscle, and a 70-year-old athlete. So you can get muscle mass at any age. It's up to you. Here we go. See your muscle as something that has its own dietary needs. It wants four meals a day. It needs to eat four times. It's a, it's, a, it's a young child banging at the kitchen table saying, I need to eat four times a day. I just want to show you something here. This is from research, of course. Uh, Dr. Phillips up at uh, in Hamilton does a lot of work. Okay, so what we see here is you need just the mere amount of protein will stimulate muscle protein synthesis. So that's MPS. And then muscle protein breakdown. So there's synthesis, breakdown, synthesis, breakdown. You got that over time. So what they call anabolic, anabolic resistance of muscle protein in aging, that is it's harder for us to build muscle tissue, but it's harder because we're not eating the appropriate amount of protein as we go throughout the day. So we need to at least Get on first base. Get on first base meaning eating the required amount of protein for us. And as you get older, you need more. So you can just add that. And there's a whole other video on that as well on sarcopenia, but just understand that that's true. Okay, so just having the correct amount of protein per day makes a huge difference in the rate of muscle protein synthesis. Huge. So here's the average person. Mostly very little muscle protein synthesis and more about muscle protein breakdown, MPB. Little synthesis, more breakdown. Just getting the appropriate amount of protein increases the synthesis. So then having your minimum amount of protein three to five times per day, you increase further MPS. What we do now, so this is us, real life. What we do now, we eat whole sources of protein four times a day, one in the morning, we get home from working out, late morning, noon snack, early afternoon, and then dinner. So we have more at dinner, so they're not all equal. It's more here, and we just want to get the minimum in there. So how to improve your muscle? Eating sufficient protein four times a day, as opposed to just once, will improve your muscle growth and health. Adding resistance training, which is going to be a whole other focus of high-intensity training, is a big deal. Look what that does. So we've gone from, we've gone from that particular, no, actually, we've gone from this particular person to this particular person by first getting the appropriate amount of protein and then adding high intensity training. More details to come. So the key rules are you need to use whole food sources of protein, which is meat, beef, lamb, game, pork, fish, sardines, mackerel, salmon, 
Cod Haddock, people often ask about tuna. The problem with tuna, it's a great source in the real world back when it was, but it's more mercury contaminated because of the whole bioaccumulation. So we tend not to have swordfish and tuna, tilefish, if you know what that is. And uh, here you have poultry, tur turkey, chicken. Turkey is half the fat of chicken, by the way. Did you know that? It's pretty lean. So why whole food sources of protein? Because you get a broader um, nutrients, all the micronutrients. So instead of taking a protein powder, which some people do, they're going to get into trouble. You take a protein powder, you are going to get essential fatty acid deficiency very quickly. And you're going to have concentration problems. You're going to have neurological problems. You'll probably generate an autoimmune in time. These are, to be simple about it, fish, meat, poultry, whole food sources of protein. Got it? So it means you have to learn how to cook, grill, or whatever, but you probably do. Four things you need to be able to calculate. The third thing, determine how much protein in what you eat in grams. What does that look like? So you know, oh, that's, that's a, a chicken breast. How much protein is in that chicken breast? So there is a little work up front you need to do. Use a food scale so you can weigh your food initially for the first week, just once in your entire life is the only time you'll have to do this. This isn't every, once you know how much protein is in a chicken breast or chicken wing or a piece of salmon, you know it, you eyeball it. It's about that big. So use a food scale, you weigh it. You can use the app Chronometer if you really want to get into it, get into that later, um, or just Google what you plan to eat and find out how many grams of protein are in it. But I would suggest you get a scale and just do the hard work right up front. It's not that hard, a little inconvenient. So here's what I suggest. This happens to be raw. You can do raw or cooked, and you can look up um, how many grams. That happens to be 134 grams of raw chicken breast. Then you look up what that is. So by contrast, three and a half ounces of grilled skinless chicken breast, which is about a third of that. And there's the grams versus ounces, right? So um, that's how many grams of protein. So in two, in three and a half ounces of grilled skinless chicken breast, you have 30 grams of protein. Some people go, oh, that's just, I have three and a half grams, three and a half ounces of uh, grilled skinless chicken breast. I must have, you know, that equals the amount of protein. No, it doesn't because there's fat and there's water. So three and a half grams grilled, four ounces of roast uh, skinless turkey breast is a little more. Remember I said it's less fat. Three and a half ounces of grilled sirloin. It goes on and on. But once you know, you can eyeball these things, it's done. Now you go, this is what I need. And so what we do in getting more, more and more efficient is we make some turkey um, hamburgers, if you will, turkey patties. So we get ground uh, turkey and sometimes ground chicken. We throw in a lot of spices and we have these ready-made so we can take them out and cook them up for a breakfast or lunch or a dinner. Or sometimes we have just a, a bunch already cooked in there. You can reach in and you take because now you know how much is in a particular patty. So you can get more efficient, but the, the work is up front learning about how much is there. Once you know that, you know that for life, like memorizing a poem. You have it for life. All right, timing. Days on and days off. You choose three or four days. I do it pretty much the whole week, and the difference is on a couple days, I make sure I have more egg yolks and more fat in my food. Um, if you were to only eat two things in your entire life and stay healthy, it would be liver and it would be egg yolks. And ideally, on the liver theme, you should include some fish livers. So there's the cod liver. A few people have that, but you can get that. You can get that on Amazon or wherever. And you can have certainly the calf's liver, the, the cow's liver, um, all the other, the chicken livers, the poultry livers. They are a better source of multi-nutrients and the egg yolks certainly are that as well. So that's a little inside secret. So here I just took a calendar and said, mark off your four days so you know what you're doing, get a little disciplined about it and do it for a month. You'll see some phenomenal changes. Okay, timing, days on and days off. Do you do continuous days on or alternative days on and off? You know, it really doesn't matter, but I get this question a lot. We do it as you, what you just saw, four straight on. Some people do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, days on, others are Tuesday, Thursday. Whatever works for you, we do 45 days consecutively. Whatever other people have done, whatever works for them, and it works out either way. That's the end. Next, I'll be getting into a bonus of going into how you can really get up your MPS, really go through your, what we call the omega-6 factor, because when you have a lot of processed oils in your food, Omega-6 specifically is about helping you be fatter. So when you start not doing processed oils, your corn oils, your soys, your canola, for the most part, processed canola, 
um, you'll be far better off with that. We go into details about that and how to use chronometer as well. So until next time, bye. Hi, I just wanted to add, if this is something you're really interested in and really trying to drill down on protein sparing modified fast, PSMF, what we call the precision PSMF, there's a couple of things. One is you can watch all the videos I've already done on this in the playlist, and that will be listed in the description. You also can join our group for a month for $50, which we hold each other accountable and go through, make sure you understand all this. And last, you might want to watch the next video coming up in which we focus on the omega-6-3 ratio. We focus on the application of high intensity uh, exercise and how to track this on chronometer so you can keep yourself a little accountable in terms of really knowing what you're doing. Take care.